Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Sami'i Dhat Kamil Sifat Khaliq Al-Ardi Wa Samawat Arsala Muhammadan Sallallahu Alayhi Wa Sallam Bashira Wa Nadira وختم به الرسل والرسالات فبلغ الأمان ونصح لهم وكشف عنها الغم وتركها على محجة بيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هذا فصل اللهم وسلم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated and the narration was reported by Al-Imam al-Bukhari and Al-Imam Muslim. He narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَرَأَيْتُمْ لَوْ أَنَّ نَحْرًا بِبَابِ أَحَدِكُمْ يَغْتَسِلُ فِيهِ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ خَمْسَ مَرَّاتٍ هَلْ يَبْقَى مِنْ دَرَنِهِ شَيْءٍ قالوا لا يبقى من درجه شيء قال ذلك مثل الصلوات الخمس يمحو الله بهن الخطايا Do you see if a river was running was flowing next to the door of one of your houses and one of you would take it back in it daily five times would any trace of dirt be left on him? They said, no, no trace of dirt will remain. He said, this is the similitude of the five daily prayers. Through them, Allah wipes all sins. Another Magnificent similitude given by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sunnah is a treasure that is filled with jewels and precious stones. The rank of Salah is very high in Islam. As a matter of fact, it is the greatest physical action a Muslim performs. That is why Allah Azza wa Jal ordained it upon every male and female Muslim regardless of the situation. Whether one is traveling or as his residence, whether he is healthy or ill, whether he is feeling safe and secure or he's scared and at war. 
But to each situation is a suitable manner of performing the salah and a suitable number of raka'at for that salah. If you think about this, that really reflects and manifests the great importance attached to salah in Islam. When Allah Azza wa Jal does not drop it in any situation, that reflects and manifests how greatly important it is. Allah Azza wa Jal glorified the rank of salah and raised its status. And that can be seen by many things. Number one, the method of legislating salah was different. See, Salah was the only act of worship in Islam that was legislated in the heavens. Everything else was on earth. Allah Azza wa Jal raised Muhammad in the journey of Al Isra and Al Mi'raj when he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ascended to the heavens. And it was there that it was legislated. Again, Salah is the only act of worship. The legislation of which was done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, where He spoke to Muhammad directly, commanded him with it. Also, think about this for a minute. It was initially legislated as 50 prayers per day. Let's think about this, brothers and sisters. If we assume that this remained the same, this would have meant that we had to perform a prayer every 25 minutes in a 24 hour cycle. But if that reflects anything, it reflects its rank and status. But then the Prophet وسلم, as in the narration and Al Bukhari and Muslim, kept going back to Allah and begging him to reduce it as per the advice of his brother Musa alayhi salatu wasalam until it was reduced to five but held the reward of fifty. Another matter that manifests its importance and high rank is that it is the spinal cord or the pillar interpreted into these two different meanings. As in the narration of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, which was reported by a Tirmidhi classified as authentic by al Albani. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Mu'adh, should I not tell you about the head of the entire matter, its spinal cord or pillar, and the peak of the matter? قُلْتُ بَلَى يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Indeed, O Messenger of Allah. He said, the head of the matter is Islam. Because nothing matters if you're not a Muslim. Regardless of what you do, it's useless. Until you enter the fold of Islam, nothing benefits you. And then the spinal cord or the pillar of that matter is salah. If someone's spinal cord is broken, what happens? He's paralyzed. If a pillar of a building is broken, it demolishes and likewise faith. And then the peak of the matter, the highest rank in Islam, is to give up your soul for Allah, is to fight jihad for the sake of Allah. <coughs> Number three, it is the first thing for which the slave male or female will be held accountable on the day of judgment. As narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, reported by a Tirmidhi classified as authentic by al Albani, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the first thing for which the slave will be held accountable on the day of judgment will be his salah. If it's complete, then he will succeed and be prosperous. If it's not complete, 
then he will be a failure and loser. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if there's something missing, if there's a shortage in Salah, then Allah will command the angels to look for optional prayers performed by the slave to make up the missing parts. To complete it. And then all other acts of worship, all other commandments will be dealt with accordingly. Number four is that it comes second in rank after a shahadati. The two testimonies of faith. As reported by Ibn Umar, or narrated by Ibn Umar rather, and reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim and At-Tirmidhi and others. The Prophet ﷺ said, Islam was founded on five pillars. The two testimonies of faith, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, through which you enter Islam. And then the first thing after that comes, the establishment of prayer. Now, <coughs> he said, Iqam is salah, the establishment of the prayer. And he did not say the performance, Adab is salah. The difference between establishing the salah and performing the salah, as defined by the scholars, is that establishing it means performing it on time, and that will come in the uh, further narrations after this. And uh, Perfecting its rukur and its sujood and submissiveness, the state of submissiveness to Allah Azza wa Jal. So it's not merely physical actions, it's not an exercise, one, two, three, four, and then alhamdulillah, I'm done. No. There is a spirit to it, there is a soul to it. And if we don't feel the soul and spirit, then something is wrong in the establishment of our prayers. Finally, it was to reflect its importance. It was the last thing which the Prophet ﷺ advised his ummah to guard in their religion. As salat wa ma malakat aymanukum. As salat as salat wa ma malakat aymanukum. Safeguard your salat. And feed Allah with regards to your slaves. This is reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al Bani. When the Prophet ﷺ was suffering the agonies of death, and he would wake up and say this, as is the narration through Umm Salama radiallahu anha, he would wake up and say, As salat, as salat. You see how important it is. And based on this importance, Allah Azza wa Jalla promised and encouraged many fruits as a result of that. There are many benefits and fruits one can harvest by maintaining and establishing the salah. Number one, he will be admitted into Jannah. Ubad ibn Samit radiallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah ordained five daily prayers the one who performs wudu properly for them prays them on time perfects their ruku' and the state of khushu' submissiveness to Allah it's a pledge upon Allah to forgive him in another narration to admit him into Jannah. This is reported by Imam Ahmad in his Muslim and classified as authentic by al -Ibad. Another thing, it's a light that guides. It's a light that guides in this life and in the hereafter. It guides you to the truth. And it guides you on the sirat. 
The Prophet said, and this is narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, radiallahu anhuma. He said, whoever maintains these five daily prayers, whoever maintains his prayers, they will be a light and evidence of his faith, burhan, wa najah, and salvation on the day of judgment. Now listen, listen to this stern warning on the, in the second half of this hadith. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and whoever does not maintain them will not have light, nor will he have evidence proving his faith, nor will, be, he will, nor will he be saved on the day of judgment, and he will be with Qarun, Fir'aun, Haman, and Ubayy ibn Khalif. It raises the ranks in Jannah. Thawban narrated, and this is in the book of Muslim. The one before that was also in the Muslim of Ahmed, classified as authentic by Ahmed Shah. Thawban said, the Prophet ﷺ told him, perform sujood, meaning salah, abundantly. For whenever you prostrate to Allah once, Allah will raise your rank in Jannah once. One rank, one level. It expiates all the previous sins. Uthman radiallahu anhu narrated, and this is in the book of Imam Muslim. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whenever a prayer is due and a Muslim stands up, performs wudu, perfects his ruku and submissiveness to Allah, it will expiate all previous sins so long as he does not commit a major grave sin. And this is for the rest of his life. It's a protection from Allah Azza wa Jal. Jumul ibn Abdullah, and this is in the book of Muslim, said, whoever prays the, the Fajr prayer will be under the protection of Allah Azza wa Jal. You want to be in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Pray. Rabi'atu ibn Ka'b al-Islami, radiyallahu anhu, said, I used to go and spend the night with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, serve him, perform, uh, prepare his wudu for him, and see whatever he needs. So one night he said, ask of me anything. He said, I ask you to be in your company in Jannah. He said, anything else? Is there anything else? He said, only this. He said, then help me fulfill this for you by performing a lot of sujood, meaning by praying abundantly. What a company. How easy is this? Very easy. And it's within reach. It's up to us to decide. We're the ones who refrain. We're the ones who run away. Allah has made it facilitated. Allah has made it easy. But we don't go, we don't seek it, we don't run after it. It doesn't take a whole lot. SubhanAllah. It is the dearest, the most beloved deed to Allah Azza wa Jal. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, I asked the Messenger of Allah وسلم, about the dearest, the most beloved deed to Allah Azza wa Jalla. He said, performing salah on time. You be doing something that Allah loves the most when we perform salah on time. And this is reported by Muslim. Now who of us brothers and sisters does not go through hardships, does not face difficulties? Life is filled with hardships and difficulties and problems. Who doesn't have a problem at work? Who doesn't have a problem with his family, his wife or her husband or their children? Who doesn't have financial difficulties at times? Who doesn't lose a friend, a relative, a beloved one? Who doesn't go through one or another's form of problems and hardships? We all do. This is the sunnah of Allah Azza wa in life. And it's the nature of people that they like to vent this out. And the best form of venting this 
sadness and anxiety out is to do it with Allah Azza wa Jalla. And the best, the best place for you to do this is when you are in sujood to Allah Azza wa Jalla. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, as narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, reported by Muslim rahimahullah, he said, the closest the slave is to Allah is whilst in the state of sujood, whilst prostrating to Allah Azza So ask Allah in dua, Allah is in your sujood. One of the shuyuk said, when you go down, don't go up. When you have anything in mind or in your heart, that you want to ask of Allah, that you didn't ask. And rest assured, he said, you will be asking the only one who can do anything. Many people go and resort to counseling, for example, right? Why? Why don't you do your counseling with Allah? One to one. When you're most honored by Allah, when, you're, when your forehead is on the ground. You want to reach one of the loftiest, highest ranks and status in Islam? What is it? You'll find out in the hadith. Am ibn Murrat al-Juhani, radiyallahu anhu, and this is reported by Ibn Hibban, classified as authentic, by al-Albani, rahmatullahi alayhi. He said a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, O Messenger of Allah, do you see if I testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that you're his messenger? Perform my salah, pay my zakah, fast Ramadan and, and stand up in, in Qiyam through it. With whom will I be? Meaning on the day of judgment. He said, Listen, Ma'as-Siddiqina wa Shuhada. Allah. With martyrs. You know the reward of martyrdom? That's a lot. As-Siddiqin, steadfast affirmers of the truth. This is a, a very special decree of the cream of the Muslims. Don't we want to be that or be amongst those? Now, having said all of this, these are all encouragements, but yet there's a warning for us if we're negligent. Listen to what Allah Azza wa Jalla says. Alam tara anna Allah yasjudu lahu man fi samawat wa man fi al-ard. والشمس والقمر والنجوم والجبال والشجر والدواب وكثير من الناس وكثير حق عليه العذاب. Do you not see that to Allah prostrates the dwellers of the heavens and the earth, the sun and the moon, the stars, the mountains and the trees, and the moving creatures and Many of the people. And many punishment has been justified upon them. Listen, when Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about anything else other than humans, it meant everything. But when it came to humans, Allah said, وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ He didn't say all people. Why? Look at the situation of the Ummah. How many people pray? There are many people who don't even think of praying. And there are others who pray and lay a prayer, play a day and then leave another day, pray a week and leave a month. Come to Salatul Jum'ah and then the next Salah will be the Jum'ah. And amongst those who pray regularly, 
Many delay the salah. Sheikh, is it permissible to pray salah to Fajr at 7.30 in the morning? Why, son? Well, that's the time I get up for work. So your job is more deserving of sacrifice than Allah. I pray Asr just before Maghrib. Why? Well, I go to sleep every day after I come back from work. And I'm not going to wake up after 45 minutes, an hour. I need to get a good rest. And then a small group of the Ummah are those who pray regularly on time. Look, listen to this hadith that is reported by Al Bukhari to see how severe the warning is. And this is reported, narrated by someone of the Jews who call the Allah. It's a long narration, we'll just take the part related to Salah. It's a dream, and this is one form of revelation to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wahi used to come in different forms, and one of them is a dream. He said, two angels came to me and woke me up, and they said, proceed with us. And then he said, we came upon a man who's lying down, and another man who's standing up at his head, holding a big rock, and smashing his head with it, crushing his head with it, and he would roll away. The man would walk to it, take it and come back. By the time he's back, the head of that man, whose head was crushed and smashed, would go with me back normal again. And continue to do that. At the end of the narration, when they explain the different scenes they've seen, he has seen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, as for the first man you've seen, with the rock smashing his head, it's a man, Who's memorized the Quran? <coughs> and did not teach it. Or act upon it. And he used to sleep through his prayer. The scholar said, delay in the prayer until you have hardly enough time to pray it is included in this stern warning in the narration. Now amongst this small group who regularly pray on time, a very small spectrum of these from the men, pray it in the masjid. You go to Salat al Eid, you see thousands of people. You go to Salat al Isha of that same day, you, have, you hardly have a line or two in the masjid. Where are the people? The Prophet ﷺ, and this is reported by Abu Bukhari, narrated by Abu Hurairah. He said, the hardest two prayers on hypocrites are Isha and Fajr. And if they knew the reward in them and had no means to reach but crawling, they would have come crawling to it. And I was about to command for firewood to be collected and then instruct a person to call the Adhan. And then appoint a man to lead the people in prayer and go to the houses of those who stayed behind and did not join the congregation in the prayer and burn them in their houses. How can the Prophet ﷺ say such a harsh and aggressive warning for something that is Recommended. And amongst those who pray in the masjid, how many do perform it with submissiveness to Allah? Brothers and sisters, we're alive, so the chance is still there. 
pledge now to Allah that we will never delay a prayer, let alone not pray. What do you want? You want Allah Azza wa Jal to rectify your affairs? Pray. You want Allah Azza wa Jal to ease your pain? Pray. You want Allah Azza wa Jal to reform your life? Pray. You want Allah Azza wa Jal to perform to reform your husband? Pray. You want Allah Azza wa Jal to give you pious children? Pray. You want Allah Azza wa Jal to give you a good job? Pray. You want to enter Jannah? Pray. You want to be in the company of Muhammad? Pray. What do we want? Everything from this dunya and everything in the akhirah is easily obtained if we maintain our prayers in the masjid and perform them properly in the details mentioned. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to rectify our affairs, reform our hearts and our souls and make us amongst those who establish and maintain their prayers regularly and continuously maintain the state of submissiveness in the salah. Allahumma ameen.